NBA fans, welcome back. Uh, I would like to jump into it by saying like the video, subscribe to the channel. We have been rapidly growing here. So join the community before it's, you know, not cool to join anymore. Um, I would also like to say everybody hop in on my live stream tonight. I'm watching the Sixers game. It'll be up on YouTube. Guess the score. If you get it right, I'll send you a processed Sixers jersey. That's what we do around here. Let's have fun. And, uh, Let's talk NBA trade deadline, all right? I got five big names most likely to be traded. I got a couple honorable mentions too, so, you know, sue me. Sue me, all right? Sue me. Let's start it off with Victor Oladipo. I think Victor Oladipo is the most likely guy to get traded um, before the deadline, big name-wise. Um, I think teams involved that would be interested in him or that I would be interested in seeing him be dealt to uh, includes Dallas, the Pelicans, Memphis, and Miami. I think these are... Miami I have there because he likes Miami a lot. I don't really know the interest Miami has in Oladipo themselves, but I know how bad Oladipo wants to go down to South Beach, so got to throw Miami in there. Um, I think Memphis could be a really interesting fit with him and John Morant defensively um, and offensively, athletic-wise. I think that'd be really cool. Dylan Brooks at the three if they don't have to deal him. I don't really know what Oladipo's return would be right now. He's going to be a, a half-year rental type guy. Um, I, it's going to be interesting, but I think... Houston, I've read up on Houston, and they are extremely willing to deal him. And so I think there is a high pop probability that he does get dealt out of out of Houston before the deadline. Number two, I have Buddy Heald. Uh, it just it's not working in Sacramento anymore. It's not with the addition of Tyrese Halliburton. It makes it ever more clear that they need to move on from Buddy Heald and his contract. I think Philadelphia is the most perfect situation for a guy like Buddy Heald. I think everything would work out perfectly and. Wow. I mean, I, I, I would love to see one of my favorite players in a Sixers jersey. I think you guys know that. I also have Memphis again. <clears throat> I think Memphis is interesting. I think they want to make the playoffs this year, and I, I, I really do think they're going to be more buyers than they are sellers. So I'm, I'm interested to see what they do. I think they need to improve on three-point shooting. That's a problem for them. They're not really consistently good from beyond the arc. I think Buddy Heald improves that for any team he goes to, obviously. Uh, number three, I have Andre Drummond. I've put a lot of thought into this, and it's it's so interesting to me because I think a buyout is the most probable. But at the same time, he won't want to get bought out because he's going to lose his bird rights, which means which means he's going to lose a bigger contract than he can uh, could possibly get in the off season. Um, I, I it's and his money is so damn hard to match. And I would like to say Boston is probably the front runner to get him, but his money is just like one million, I think, or a one and a half million dollars over their trade exception. So I just don't see that being a possible deal. And it's going to be really challenging to move a guy like him. I have Charlotte and Dallas on there too. Um, but I, I, I think Charlotte could sneakily go out and get another guy because I think they're realizing like, oh, our team's pretty good. Like we're, we're like one piece away from being a four seed. I mean, I don't think they're that far away from Toronto as is. And I think if they get another guy... Uh, on a on a bigger name scale, I think why not four seed? You know what I mean? I think Charlotte's a, a really good team. I think the emergence of Lamelo Ball, Miles Bridges is playing out of his mind. Uh, Terry Rozier is a stud in the fourth quarter, especially. Uh, Malik Monk is having the best year of his career. Charlotte's a good, young, athletic, and fun team. I wouldn't be surprised to see their buyers as well. I also have uh, Brooklyn. The only way Brooklyn acquires Andre Drummond though is through uh, a buyout. So number four, I got Lamarcus Aldridge. I know it's not like the San Antonio Spurs to, to do midseason trades. Like, they never do, right? They never, ever do. But LaMarcus Aldridge just doesn't fit the timeline. He doesn't fit anything that Spurs basketball is at the moment. And I just feel like somewhere there's a team that would grab a guy like LaMarcus. I think Oklahoma City could. Uh, I think Oklahoma City is probably... I mean, it's the only team I have written down for LaMarcus Aldridge. And I think Oklahoma City, because... Look what they did with Al Horford. I mean, they took on a guy who is a similar play, set, play style... Um, and really took a chance on his contract, and I think Al Horford's had a, 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 a resurgence type of year. So I think Oklahoma City and Sam Presti could possibly make a move to get Lamarcus Aldridge. I don't know. I'm interested to see that. Number five, it's not going to happen, but I have Kristaps Porzingis, and the three teams I have that I, I think should and would be interested are Sacramento, uh, Portland, and Orlando. I think this because... First of all, Porzingis is not good anymore. He just, he's not good. He hasn't improved. He has hurt more than most guys in the league. Uh, 
and it's just not working for Luca. Like it's just not working. That trade that they did with the Knicks turned out not to just they just not work. You know, it's just it wasn't good. Porzingis is not working in Dallas. They need to they need to ship him sooner rather than later, probably. Um, I think Sacramento needs something at the four. I think Bagley and Porzingis could arguably be an okay athletic four five type deal. Um, but Sacramento needs to make a move, I think. I think they need to fire Luke Walton. Check out my video from yesterday. I, I made a whole rant about it. But I think Sacramento could be in play for a guy like Porzingis uh, to give up. I don't, I don't know what they would give up. Buddy Heald, I mean, they are lacking shooting for Dallas big time. So, I mean, why not have a package around Buddy Heald and maybe some maybe some picks? You know? I don't know. Portland, Portland has had the most inconsistent four power forward play I've ever seen in the last eight years. So... Ever since Aldridge left, so probably less than eight years, but ever since Aldridge left, they've had yet to have a, a consistent power forward. And I think Porzingis could fill in pretty nicely for a guy like Dame to spot up and, and shoot and score around for him. Uh, and I have Orlando. Orlando is in the weirdest limbo area in the league. They are extremely underperforming right now. They're 12 and 20. The team sucks. They've lost Markel Fultz and they've been bad ever since, but... They're probably not going to trade Vucevic, and so you would assume that they're going to try and fight for a playoff spot, and I think by doing so, you could probably see a guy like Porzingis, you know, be in a move to come over to Orlando just because, I mean, they, they want to make the playoffs, and right now the team the way it is is not making the playoffs. And I have a 5B, Kyle Lowry. If you know my content, you know how many videos I've made about the Sixers getting Kyle Lowry, and... Obviously, I have Philadelphia as the number one destination for a guy like Kyle Lowry. He has said openly how he would want to come back uh, and to his hometown and play for Philly. I also have the Clippers and Miami. I think the Clippers could make a good, really good deal. And I think the Clippers, wow, they would be arguably the best team in the West if they had a guy like Kyle Lowry because that just adds playmaking and that's a, a, a struggle that the Clippers have had since getting Paul George and uh, Kawhi Leonard. So I think he could fit really, really well in there in uh, Los Angeles. Also, I have Miami because I I just think it's a, another good fit. I think he's a good starting point guard for a, guy, a team like Miami. Right now, Miami's been starting Kendrick Nunn with Dragic, Dragic coming back. So I, I think Kyle Lowry could be a good starter for that team and really add a, a next-level toughness and grittiness that is Miami culture. So, I mean, I think that's really cool. So those are my five B guys. Um, my honorable, less big-named mentions are P.J. Tucker, I think Milwaukee is going to be absolutely in play. I think Phoenix is going to be in play. Phoenix could really, really use a guy like P.J. Tucker off the bench. And Toronto. I think Toronto is a very interesting spot for a guy like P.J. Tucker. He fits the culture there. That could be a lot of fun to see him play. Lou Williams. I have Lou Williams, Philadelphia, and Boston. Boston needs backup scoring. Uh, they have nothing outside of Tatum and Brown. And I think Lou Williams could be really, really fun there if he can kind of bounce back and have a better season. I mean, he's been playing better the last couple of weeks, though. And Philadelphia, for the same exact reasons, Philadelphia lacks bench go-to scoring, really. I mean, we have Shake Milton, but Shake Milton isn't um, elite enough at this point of his career, but he will be, because I stand for Shake Milton and everything Shake Milton. Uh, then I have J.J. Redick. J.J. Redick, for me, I think Milwaukee would be interesting. Always add shooting. I think the Knicks are in play. I think the Knicks are very much in play, actually. And I, again, think Philadelphia. Philadelphia could always need more shooting, just like Boston. But Boston sucks, so I don't want to compare the two teams because they're not the same to my Boston my Boston viewers. Then I have George Hill. Uh, Boston, Philadelphia, and Atlanta. I think Atlanta, because Rajon Rondo has been terrible this year, and Chris Dunn is just injured, always. They need a backup point guard who can actually play defense because Trey Young is allergic to defense. Philadelphia would be really, really big because we need backup 3 and D point guard play. Um, and he's a veteran, and he's going to bring leadership and playoff experience. And Boston, because of the exact same reasons as the Philadelphia, the Boston Celtics have no backup. I mean, Pey Peyton Pritchard's pretty good, but they're going to need some uh, better defensive play from a guard like that. And number five, I have JaVale McGee. I think the Brooklyn Nets could definitely use uh, JaVale McGee. They could probably get him on something cheap, too. That's going to be interesting to see. I think he for sure should go to Brooklyn. Brooklyn needs a defending five. And anything to help that their defensive struggles, because the defensive struggles in Brooklyn are so well-known and well-documented because they're just blatant. They are in your face. Um, and I have the Boston Celtics. Boston Celtics need someone that can cover a guy like Embiid. 
because the Boston Celtics have no defense, no interior defense um, from their four or five. Robert Williams at times shows, yeah, he's really, really good defensively and he's a really good athlete, but he does not do it consistently. He gets chewed up on the uh, pick and rolls. Uh, the perimeter pick and rolls he gives up more threes than any big man i think i've seen and he just gets the most sporadic playing time that uh they're really they really need just a a veteran guy to plug in at five tristan thompson is a good rebounder but he doesn't play enough defense and and is gonna just kill him as he has um as we've seen this year so that's my video for today i'm gonna be live streaming tonight don't forget peace out go sixers fans